Do you know what the biggest discovery of Sir Isaac Newton is? Is it the laws of universal gravitation? Or is it three laws of motion? Or is it finding the composition of white light? It is inarguably one of the most arguable topics in science, but scientists would surely agree that it is another one of his discoveries that left a remarkable and unprecedented impact on the way to interpret modern-day science and math. And that discovery is calculus. Surely, we're not diving into the world of calculus in this video, but we are going to discuss something equally important and more fundamental than calculus. It's called functions. Functions are the concept of pre-calculus era that have extensive application in calculus. Calculus is all about functions, so it's important to be pretty fluent with functions before moving to calculus. Now, let's see, what are functions? You must already be aware of different types of functions, such as linear function like y equals 2x plus 1, quadratic function like y equals 2x squared plus 1, ninth degree polynomial function like 2x raised to n plus 1, exponential function like y equals e raised to x, logarithmic functions like y equals log x to the base 10, or the trigonometric functions like sin theta, cos theta, or tan theta. To have a closer look at what trigonometric functions are, let's consider a circle of radius 1 unit, with its center as the origin of coordinate plane in x and y axis. We can draw this circle by starting from origin and moving a unit distance to the right along x axis. Let the origin be represented by O, and a point at a unit distance to its right be represented by P. The line OP is rotated anti-clockwise, and the path traced by point P forms the part of the circle. By default, the angle of OP is measured from x-axis in counterclockwise direction, and it is called angle of inclination. Now, I drop a line from point P straight down on x-axis. Then, I move along x-axis till I reach origin of coordinate plane. This will give a right triangle. Isn't that so? Now, what does trigonometric function cos theta tell us? Cos theta is the ratio of length adjacent side to it to the hypotenuse OP. Since hypotenuse is the radius of the circle itself and the circle is of unit radius, hypotenuse becomes equal to 1 and cos theta becomes equal to the length of the adjacent side. The angle of inclination theta can be rewritten as cos, inverse length of adjacent side. If I replace theta by y and length of adjacent side by x, the function is expressed as y equals cos inverse x. This is somewhat similar to other functions, which represent the relationship between variables x and y. In all these functions, we see that there is a y term and there is an x term. Moreover, there is an equal sign between the left-hand side quantity and the right-hand side quantity. It's kind of intuitive to say that a function is a relation between more than one variable, having an equal sign separating the left-hand and right-hand sides of the equation. This is a primary sort of definition for functions, but we must define functions in a much more specific way to understand its true essence. Before moving on, let's see how to represent a function mathematically. Let's take a very simple equation, y equals 2x. This equation can be represented graphically or in a tabular way. It simply means that whatever the x value is, y becomes double of it. For example, if x is equal to 1, y becomes 2, and if x is equal to 2, y becomes 4. So y keeps on changing for different values of x, and that's why we can call y a dependent variable, as its value is dependent on x value. Since y is dependent on x, we can call y variable as a function of x variable. The equation is written as f of x equals 2x. f shows a dependency relationship or a function, 
which is dependent on the variable that is written inside the round brackets. The variable x is called an independent variable, as it can independently take any relevant or mathematically sensible value. The mathematically sensible values that x and y variables can take are of special interest. This we cover in the next video on domain and range, which is crucial for understanding the behavior of functions. Now, let's use an additional variable z to our existing equation, such that y equals 2x plus z. y is a dependent variable, whose value is dependent on values of two independent variables, x and z. So, it can be written as a function of two independent variables, x and z. Before the equation, y equals 2x plus z, we have seen all function with just two variables, x and y. But this is not necessarily the case every time. A function can have n number of variables, and n can be any natural number equal to or greater than 2. But here comes an important question. Can we call an equation with one variable as a function? Let's see with an example. 9 equals 2x plus 1. For this equation to exist, the x value must fix to 9 minus 1 by 2, that is 4. You cannot have value of x other than 4, so x can't be called a variable. For a variable to exist, it must take more than one value. So in this equation, x is called unknown value rather than a variable. Since function is a relationship between different variables, we can't call an equation with one variable as a function. The next very important concept behind function is that all the elements of an independent variable will have exactly one value of a dependent variable. In other words, I can say that for a given input, one cannot have more than one output. To understand it, let's see an example. y equals x plus 1. It's a function that input x values, add 1 to it, and return it as the output. For x equal to 1, the output is 2. For x equal to 2, the output is 3. For x equal to 2.1, the output is 3.1. What can we see here? For every input in x variable, we get a different value of y variable. We cannot obtain a case where we get two or more output values for a given input value of x variable. If we input two, the output will be three. In no way can the output have a value other than three. That's why we say that for a given input, we have one and only one output. Multiple outputs for a given input are never allowed in functions. Now, let's make things a bit more interesting by squaring the x term. Let's take 1 as input, which gives 2 as output. If we take 2 as input, the output equals 5. For 3 as input, the output equals 10. Now take negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 as inputs. This will again give 2, 5, and 10 as outputs respectively. This is so because squaring a positive or a negative number will always result in a positive number. Hence, we see those different values of input variables like x equal to plus 2 or minus 2 will give exactly the same output in this case. It's not necessary in functions that we always get a unique output for different values of input. Different input values may or may not give exactly the same output. To sum up all that we have covered so far, a function is a kind of relationship or a mathematical operation that is performed on input or on independent variable to give an output or dependent variable. Mathematically, a function is represented by f with a bracket and independent variables written inside the bracket. If we have one independent variable, as in the equation y equals x plus 1, the function is written as f of x equals x plus 1. In case of two independent variables, as in equation y equals x plus z plus 1, 
the function is written as f of x comma z equals x plus z plus 1. Apart from its mathematical representation, a function is also usually shown in a tabular or graphical manner. Moreover, for an equation to qualify as a function, it must have at least one dependent and one independent variable. If we replace one of the variables by a constant, let's say 10, then the equation has only one unknown and it cannot be called as a function. Next, the functions always have an equal to sign. It cannot have greater than or less than inequalities. Now winding up this video with the most important concept of functions, all input values will have exactly one output value respectively. Not even a single input value is allowed to have more than one output values. However, more than one input values can have exactly the same output value. Thanks so much for watching the video. Our team has researched at length to present the concepts of functions in a step-by-step, -step, easy to understand manner. We want committed learners like you to have a complete and thorough understanding of what functions are. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up by hitting the like button and don't forget to share it with your liked ones as well.